on campus. So we will get started. Just a couple housekeeping things. We are in webinar format for Zoom. So you don't have camera access, but you do have access to the Q&A and chat um, in Zoom. Please feel free to use the question and answer if you have any questions along the way. I'll be navigating both the presentation and the Q&A. So um, I will probably get through most of the presentation and then have plenty of time for your question and answer before the end of today's workshop at 1.15. Um, my name is Katie Waisaki and I serve as the director of the Career Enrichment Network. Um, we are really excited to be kicking off our liberal arts career week um, with this event on psychology majors. Um, I am a psychology, I was a psychology major myself and, and know how difficult the decisions can be as well as the numerous options that there are. So just a reminder to this is the first live event. Um, so we have lots going on this week. Um, after this, we'll also be covering the language major um, at 4.30. Please make sure you're following us on Instagram. We're also having some passive resources. Today's focused on gap year with um, some of our staff as well as some great alumna that have uh, had the experience. Tomorrow, we will talk a little bit more about economics and English and CAS majors um, with our Instagram focus on LinkedIn. <clears throat> Wednesday, you'll have the opportunity to meet with us. Um, we will have drop-ins and pop-ins. We have them every Wednesday in our office in 101 Sparks or through Zoom. Um, and you can come in and see us between one and four on Wednesday. We will also be in the Chapin Center for Student Success for their Wayfinding Wednesdays where you can ask us, uh, ask a career coach. So lots of events going on this week. Keep an eye on the website. All your Zoom links will be found there. And again, everything should be recorded this week for access later on our YouTube channel. Um, please keep an eye on those announcements. I know we're anticipating a little bit of bad weather this week, so we'll have to navigate that as we see what happens with the forecast. So let's get started with what can I do with a bachelor's degree in psychology? So lots of things. We meet with so many psychology majors throughout the week. Number one, because there's the most of you, um, but number two, because it can be daunting all the options that are available. So today we're going to talk about those options and the versatility within the major, what you can do in career, as well as values that come into play in making those decisions. Um, all the industries that are open to you, um, what employers are really looking for, some next steps, and basically for you to know that you don't have to make those decisions by yourself. There are lots of resources available to help you to do that. Okay, so many times, even when I'm meeting with students, um, you know, their focus is on clinical or therapy. Um, and that's really just a fraction of the opportunities that we see psychology majors have open to them. Um, there are a lot of different areas within that, um, developmental, cognitive, IO psych. Um, but I think the common thread amongst all of us that have chosen this major, myself included, is I want to help people or I want to know how they think or why they do what they do. Um, so that's pretty common across any industry you see psychology majors go into. It should also be clear that your major does not always dictate your career. The skill sets that you learn, um, the experiences that you have in the classroom, out of the classroom, they all create this perfect storm for you being a very competitive candidate and what you're going to do next. Um, but something common that we don't always think about is what we value. You've decided this major because you, you like people or you want to help people or you want to advocate for someone who needs that advocacy or you want to make a difference in the world or maybe it's monetary. Maybe you want to own your business, own business one day and along the way help those that you can um, through your own wealth. Uh, there are tons of values and they all have a place in your decision-making um, and what will make you happy day-to-day and -day career that you're going to do. Remember, your first job is not your last. Um, all these decisions do not need to be made by graduation. It truly will be those experiences you have along the way that support you in getting there. So the decision. I know a lot of you, will, I want you to take all those things into consideration. 
But for some of you, the first decision is, do I go to grad school? Do I not go to grad school? I don't want to go to grad school or I can't afford grad school or, you know, I'm just so uncertain. Why would I take that next step without being certain about what I should study? Um, I think that's all important things to make before this investment. It is an expensive one. Um, there are opportunities out there for financial support or assistantships or fellowships, um, but maybe the timing isn't right for you and that's okay too. So in that decision, I just want you to remember, if we look at data, um, in 2017, only 56% of those that graduated with a degree in psychology had a bachelor's. So it's common practice to leave a higher or leave college and, and go out and figure out what you want to do first, right? And, and use that degree. It's a valuable degree, it has lots of transferable skills. Um, and we see that in common practice. Only 14% of those graduates um, in 2017 um, had a specific graduate degree in psychology. Um, the other 30% were did earn a graduate degree, but in another field. I myself went into student affairs um, and work in higher ed. Um, they might think about healthcare or an MBA or marketing and sales um, and think about other areas outside of that traditional psychology graduate degree. The options are really vast. <clears throat> This narrows down that graduate degree, thinking about that as your next step. 94% um, of those 24 and younger uh, had a bachelor's degree. Um, and you can see as the age rises, the experiences increase. Um, it, the graduate degree in psychology increases as well, um, but still a smaller portion of those in this field. So I think there is this misconception that I have to go to graduate school for anything to be of value in my career. And it's it's just really not true. So I wanted to point that out to you. I also wanted to point out that the APA, we're all using it, right? In some shape or form in our research or our papers, but it also has a great career resource for you. Um, whether it be looking for undergrad research opportunities or just career trends or career opportunities, I would take a look at it for more than just your writing and your research. So, as I mentioned, and as you probably all have dabbled in a little bit, there are lots of things you can do with your undergrad degree in psychology. That core is going to be understanding and helping people, um, and that's why you kind of landed on this major, right? So there are multiple different areas we commonly see, but nothing is restricted, right? You have opportunity to do what you value, what you like. Um, and what you would want to get up every day to do. Um, this is coming from what can I do with this major? Any of you have met with, with me in my office one-on-one -on -one for career coaching. I use this quite often, especially for psychology. Um, and this is really helpful to see the big picture and kind of narrow some things. There's nothing more satisfying than crossing something off your list. Education, it's out, you know, or research. You know what? I really don't like it. I'd rather be more hands-on. Um, you know, those kind of things. So let's let's dive into this. So starting with human services, this is something to ask yourself, who do I want to help and how do I want to help them? And as you can see, there's an opportunity in this area for direct care or more of an administrative work, um, raising money, grant, grant writing for those social justice organizations or doing management for a team of community outreach um, servers or being in the in the thick of things as a therapist or a caregiver, probation officer. So it's thinking outside the box of what we've always known to think about those people that are making things happen too for those who want to be directly involved. These are located in a variety of areas. Um, it could be within a government agency, whether that be federally, state, or local. It could be in a senior living community, um, all the way to rehabilitation, or right here in a college or university, like a CAPS or um, an, a student advocacy office, or even our office in outreach to students um, and supporting them in their decision making and self assessment. <clears throat> 
it's always great to see an example of this. So we will pull alumni who are doing great things for each one of these. Alyssa is no longer with Center Helps, but she, and this is just recently, um, for any of you that might be involved with the Hotline Crisis um, Center, she was managing that. Um, she had a bachelor's degree in psych from here. And as you can see, she was involved while on campus, but she led this program and helped to recruit students like you to gain really valuable experience and training um, working while they're here for their undergrad. So we are always promoting Center Helps as a great resource to kind of help you figure out where you want to be. <clears throat> Austin is also located here in State College region. He is a family reunification counselor for family intervention crisis services. Um, so also working with a bachelor's degree in psychology and supporting people through human services. Hmm. Research we find is another common area that students are interested in. Uh, this is where you're going to ask yourself, who do I want to understand? Or how will understanding this create a bigger impact? Um, who do I wanna work with? Um, those areas can be you know, very direct in working with children and child development. It could be UX research. So it could be market research or understanding product research and what's you know trendy and what makes money and what do people want, right? Um, it could be IO site research and understanding labor unions or you know the work environment. <clears throat> this is available through a, var a variety of areas. Um, again, we don't always think about the government, um, but they usually have some kind of institute or center that is doing the support for like the Department of Labor or the DOJ or the Department of Defense um, that helps support those decisions made in those agencies. There are nonprofits, of course, there's university and colleges, um, market research firms, consulting firms. So a lot of times people are interested in being a consultant. Um, a lot of that is research and supporting a client to make better decisions and be more um, lucrative or be more efficient in what they're doing. So there can be a really great connection to business and human resources and research for our psych majors and consulting. Holly is a behavioral research coordinator. She recently graduated and obtained this job in DC um, with a bachelor's degree. This is all from LinkedIn. So sometimes I'll also work with students to use LinkedIn to find alumni and just see their great paths or how everyone's is unique um, and help inspire us to find, you know, different places to intern or potential grad school programs or just see how someone can have a unique path and they're not all the same. Um, sometimes that's just rewarding to see everyone's a little different. Education is a huge part of psychology as well. Um, we see great research opportunities here in the department in this area, especially working with children. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be teaching. Um, it could be in the higher ed support side of things, um, you know, in admissions, what we do, res life, um, CAPS, leadership training or development, um, student activities, um, student conduct. Um, but also in teaching at the higher ed level or under or, uh, private or public K through 12, um, down to college prep programs. So not uh, for-profit areas where, you know, you're being paid to help support students um, in gaining educational background or skills or testing. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity in education um, library sciences, we've seen a few go into that area that help to link both education and community development and making a difference there. So a lot of options there as well. Dana is a great example of education for a psychology. She was a concurrent major in CRIM and so in psych and recently graduated as well. She is a sixth grade STEM teacher in Houston, Texas, but this is through Teach for America. We see a lot of uh, liberal arts students interested in Teach for America. It's a great commitment of two years. You're paid a teacher's salary. You are certified to teach at the end of that program. And there is financial support um, for further education. 
So we do see a lot of people do it and go into stay in education or go to get their master's degree to become a principal, or you know they've been engaged with the educational inequities for so long that they're ready for change. So they go into a public policy program um, or maybe school counseling. So Teach for America can really be a helpful gap year experience for many or a career. It could be a great career change um, and support in gaining your certification um, and extra money for graduate school. We The deadline, um, the next deadline for Teach for America is coming up in February. We have a great recruiter who is actually, um, he is an alum of our college, uh, Will Smart. Um, he will be on campus this spring, uh, but we can always connect you if you, you have an interest or have some questions as well. Uh, human resources is another area within the IO psych field. Um, this can be anywhere from, you know, those recruiters you engage with who are on campus, who are looking to, you know, hire more people for their positions. It could be those who are interviewing. Um, it could be those who are creating a happy, healthy working environment with, you know, um, staff satisfaction, um, staff, staff surveys. Boy, um, or the compensation and benefit side of things, um, or maybe just training or professional development. Um, work life balance is very important right now. So, we're seeing a lot of research in that area, the hybrid work model. Um, how do we all make, make it work? And psychology obviously has a strong background in that. Um, so, there's a lot of opportunities for what your skill in your classroom setting has set you to funnel into human resources. All these employers, this could be anywhere. This could be, you know, um, HR for, you know, the Philadelphia Eagles, or it could be HR for you love theater and you're looking at HR for the Actors Guild or Broadway. You know, there are opportunities in every, you know, corner of the world for HR. Um, and you can really consider your values and your interest in thinking about what industry you want that to be in. Um, you know, if you, want the luxury of being able to travel and work at exotic resorts across the world? Well, they have HR. Um, so maybe you start gathering experience in hotel management to work your way up there. So there's connections and opportunity in a lot of areas in the HR field. Here's an example. Brian is the Vice President of Human Resources um, at Nomara. Uh, he had a bachelor's degree as well with the IO focus um, in psychology and is now working in New York City in HR. The last one is business, and obviously business is very broad. Um, when I was deciding on a psychology major, it was at a time when many corporations loved the psychology degree, and they still do, with the idea of you know how people work, you know what they like. You can read people, so sales, um, understanding how what's trending or um, you know the factors that lead to people making decisions, that plays into marketing and advertising. So there really was this understanding that this social science could be a really great support to the business field. Um, and it remains today. Uh, so these are different areas we see students go into. I work with a lot of recruiters in sales and they love when a psych major is interested in sales. Um, there's a lot of entry jobs in that area, including in tech sales, um, that they, they are always you know, looking for a psych student that might be interested. These employers are as vast as the last with HR, um, anywhere from you know, wholesalers to the manufacturers to you know, international companies. Um, we see a variety of areas of people of interest, um, down to getting more training and becoming a real estate agent and being your own boss, right? There are lots of opportunities with your background. Our alumni example um, is Laurel, and he is an executive assistant in marketing for Calvin Klein in New York City. He also has a bachelor's degree in psychology. This was in his first job. Obviously, he worked his way up to this position and gained experience. I'd like to point out to those interested in the sales and marketing area, your leadership experience is just so valuable in understanding you know, uh, people and working in groups, 
um, selling a product, um, you know, increasing your membership, and you can really gather a lot of experience in the business world through those leadership opportunities here on campus. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. So what do employers really want? These are the top skills employers are looking for. And this is across every industry. The good news is, and I know I'm partial, but liberal arts students excel in these areas, especially psychology students. So in the classroom, you are constantly problem solving or working in groups or learning new skills or presenting or writing papers. Um, these are all very important to your future and your career. Uh, and you're doing it by nature every day. We just need to talk about how we market that and how we make you competitive in all those common skills that you already have. In the classroom, <clears throat> these skills are coming up, as I mentioned, with your group work, um, your presentation. You've been doing a lot of these things since high school. Um, you're gaining new experiences. You're uh, gaining a global perspective. Um, you're working with diverse groups and people. Uh, so all of that is very valuable as you enhance it. The great combination is taking your in-classroom skill sets and combining them with your outside the classroom skill sets. And this comes with the research you may be doing in the lab or through the summer. Uh, any volunteer work, you know, commonly, if you decided children were your focus, any experience with children starting in your first year at college is going to be beneficial through the four years you're here, um, whether that be a summer camp or um, volunteering at State College Area School District to tutor. Uh, there's tons of opportunities to gain experience hands-on with, with kids, if that's what you're interested in, um, and then get deeper into the specifics that you wanna do um, in the future. Part-time jobs are very valuable. Those recruiters and sales I mentioned earlier, they love a server. They love the skill sets you have in working a Friday night shift and problem solving and dealing with not so nice people sometimes and, you know, upselling, training others. You know, there's lots of skills. We just need to focus on those great words um, instead of necessarily, you know, the common things you're doing. Student orgs and leadership. Um, I will say this often, quality versus quantity, Ten, you know, being in 10 different orgs as the member is not as valuable as being a leader in one or two. So think about that um, when you're adding it to your resume or you're getting involved, depending on what class year you are. Focus on what matters to you. Focus on, you know, what you want to gather your, your, your strengths in um, and what you enjoy in the long run. Um, but how you can tie that into a future career can be helpful in making those, those decisions. Our office also supports education abroad in those conversations. <clears throat> so thinking about what you wanna do in the future, if you wanted to have an international um, opportunity, then maybe take the time now at Penn State um, to study abroad, whether that be for a semester, a year, or maybe you do an embedded program where it's just a week, um, there is lots of funding to help you to do this. So I would never discount this experience um, until you talk to one of us to help you to decide if um, how much uh, support really is out there. Internships are amazing, but all experience is good experience. Um, so remember that in when you're looking um, and we can help you to find that here in the office. I suggest at least one internship throughout your career, um, but that can look different for everybody. It doesn't need to be for credit to be valuable. Um, you just need to gain those experiences and build those networks. Um, so again, you're never alone in those decisions or finding those resources. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about how you can connect with us. <clears throat> so some of the next steps, <clears throat> You're thinking about where you are, where you've been, how you got where you're at, um, and where you want to go. Um, I think it's thinking about, you know, what has mattered to you. And remember, even a bad experience is a good experience um, to know that maybe 
you're checking that off your list that that's not something you want to do. What do you want to do? What do you want your day to day look like? Um, what do you want your work life balance to look like? Do you want to be close to family? Um, who do you want to help? Um, and how do I get there? What, what do I need? What are my gaps in my experiences? If we looked at those skills again, if, um, transferable skills, uh, where, what area do I need to work a little bit stronger on? I'm interested in business. You know, maybe I should think about Microsoft Excel and, and maybe doing a LinkedIn learning on that. Um, or, you know, I really think I want to go into recruiting and HR but I'm not always comfortable talking to people. Maybe I'll join a group that allows me to do that more. Um, so thinking about that now um, to kind of further yourself and gain more experience can be really, really helpful. Um, meeting with a career coach. So I mentioned this often throughout this presentation is you're not alone. So we in the Career Enrichment Network here in the College of Liberal Arts, are all career coaches. So you can schedule an appointment with us through Nittany Lion Careers. We are not in Starfish, which can be confusing. I know that's where your advisors are. But through Nittany Lion Careers, you can schedule an appointment with someone that has liberal arts after their name under counseling. Um, and that's all I would do. Don't pick any other filters because sometimes it kicks us out. Just pick my name or anyone's name you see that has liberal arts. Um, and you can go ahead and see our availability and schedule as many 30 minute appointments as you need to help you through your process. So we can help you with the exploration. We can help you find an internship. We can help you write a resume, do a mock interview, review your letters of our uh, statements of interest for graduate school, um, all the way to helping you negotiate a salary for a really great job. So always someone there to help you. So I went through that all pretty quick, um, but we do have plenty of time for questions. So if anyone has questions, please feel free to put them in the queue and I see one in there right now. The question is, what internships would you recommend to someone with no experience and wants to get ex exposure to this field? So I think uh, for the person answering this question, I would ask you those questions we just talked about, of who do you wanna work with? Um, which area of industry are you more interested in? I think that given your class year, um, if you have some time, maybe get involved on campus first. Um, if you're interested in children, um, maybe consider some of those things I mentioned earlier with um, in childcare or um, summer camps or um, you know, volunteering. Um, if you're interested more in the business route, um, again, those leadership roles on campus can be a great start, um, but it would be building a resume around your academic experience or part-time work experience to look into internships in the area you might be interested in. All, all experience is good experience from volunteering, part-time work to uh, student orgs, so I would suggest any of those. Okay. Um, are we able to use the Career Center after we graduate? So the, um, liberal, the Career Enrichment Network is focused, focused on undergrads and graduate students, alumni career services over in the Bank of America Career Services Center is available to all alumni. Um, if you wanted to send me a direct email, we could try and schedule something, but unfortunately, after your status in the Inline Careers changes to alumni, um, you won't see us anymore as, as career coaches, but you, you're always welcome to reach out to me directly and I can see what I can do. Okay. Questions are coming in. <clears throat> Let's see. How can faculty members also help students explore career pathways from a psychology major? So I think sometimes it's just hearing your story. Um, we are always referring our students to faculty office hours um, to hear about their own personal experiences and why they decided on the potential um, route they're on, whether it be IO psych or developmental or cognitive. Um, why they decided on the certain programs they did or advice on the graduate school application process. Um, 
I think that obviously we would always um, suggest a referral back to us, but we can also um, suggest you know, some resources that you could use, like the what can I do with a major in to help those those students. They're all they're all very different. Every one of you and, and myself included is always interested in a little bit something different. Um, so sometimes it's just hearing where you are and considering some experiences that could give you some good ideas. Okay. Any more questions? Good, just a minute. I wanted to put out here again the Liberal Arts Career Week. Make sure you're taking a look at all the upcoming events. Um, we have one more question pop in. Do employers typically look at transcripts? No, not typically. There are some, depending on the industry. So maybe in research they might, and maybe in some of the bigger organizations where, you know, like our big four consulting firms, they require a um, certain GPA, so like EY is 3.5 maybe. So some of them do require you to upload your transcripts to the system to confirm that, um, but more than likely, no. Um, it tends to be more of a skill-based, what are your skills? It's not even necessarily your major, it's what are your skills, both hard and soft skills. Um, and, and how do we you know, best promote that on your resume? Good question. I know that was a very gray answer though. Yes and no. <laughs> some do, some do not, and some really, it doesn't matter. They're just looking for what you can do and what you bring to their table. Any other questions? Well, while you're thinking, please feel free to add another one. Um, I just wanted you to save the date for our upcoming virtual recruiting week. This will be February 6th through the 10th. This is a QR code to that webpage. You can also find this information at the bottom of the Liberal Arts um, Career Week website. Uh, we will have a few employers every day where you can schedule to have one-on-one -on -one appointments with them through Nittany Lion Careers. Um, there are a few that might be very you might be interested in between HR, human services, um, social justice, and the like. Um, so I would suggest taking a look at that now because we are limited in spots for these employers. So it, it, the first come, first serve. I'm sorry, the big four. That's a great question. Thank you for clarification. So the big four are the top four accounting consulting firms, and those are Deloitte. PwC, KPMG, and EY, Ernst & Young. There's also a big three. <laughs> um, I, I couldn't tell you, Boston Consulting Group, uh, McKinsey, and I can never remember the third one, but they're, they're um, very much consulting top, top four, top, top three. Thank you for that. Do I have any general interview? Do I have any general interview tips? Absolutely. Um, and we are having a, a workshop this Wednesday on interviewing as well. Um, but I would say for all of you, from the resume to the interview, to make sure you understand the, uh, the job posting or the internship posting. The key qualifications, the key words, they're all in there for the candidate that they're going to hire. And those are the skills they're looking for. So if you can come up with strong examples for those skills or qualifications to tell in your interview when they ask you questions, you're more likely to be seen in that role. If you can use some of that language in your cover letter or your resume, you're more likely to connect with them from the beginning to get you that interview. Some of our companies are using application tracking systems now, so your resume could be scanned to see if you are using those keywords and have those qualifications that they're looking for. So I would really say in prepping for an interview, make sure you understand and can promote yourself with strong examples using what they're looking for, as well as research the company to, for them to recognize your great connection to them. They don't wanna feel like they're just one of a hundred that you're applying for. Again, quality versus quantity. Um, 
I'm not always impressed when a student has applied to 150 companies um, because I think there might be something missing in that specialization of that resume or connecting with the cover letter um, to really make an impact on, on in that application. So we can help you to kind of understand that and prepare for that. So I would suggest the STAR method, message, method and when you're preparing um, with those examples. So it's situation, task, action items, um, results, and then reflection. So having a, a, an example that tells what you had to do, what you did, what happened, and maybe how you would do it better or, or different in the next time can be helpful when you're, when you're organizing your thoughts. So that's just quick, but we can help you with that too with a career coach one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, I am super into Deloitte. Career services can help me with the resume. We sure can, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, depending on your class year, the Deloitte um, internship cycle usually happens in the fall. So just fair warning, I would be ready to go um, when you get on campus in August, and we are here all summer long to do Zoom career coaching as well um, to help you prepare. Deloitte and the other big four that I mentioned tend to be um, very engaged in the beginning of each semester. Um, so I would keep an eye on Nittany Lion careers under events for information sessions. They don't always attend some of the bigger career fairs. They do their own thing. So the more you can connect with some of these companies on campus, the more likely you are to make a difference in your application. Some of these workshops also allow you to sign in so you actually get some points for, for connecting with them outside of the application, um, which can be very, really helpful. Okay, these are all great questions, but could all be a whole presentation. So. Um, the next one is how do you suggest negotiating your salary? So again, it could be a much longer conversation. I don't want to set you in the wrong direction with too quick of an answer, but a lot of this comes from research as well in using websites like Glassdoor or, um, you know, the salary uh, calculators, um, cost of living. So um, understanding the value your value and having reasonable expectations of a potential entry level um, given where the location. So, you know, getting paid 50,000 in state college compared to 75,000 in New York City could be very comparable given the cost of living to New York City, right? So there are a lot of factors to go into figuring your, your value and your expectations going in. Um, and we can help you with that as well with some of the external resources as well as um, a conversation on how to figure that out. I would also suggest for those of you who are thinking about fall already that we have a professional development course, LA 103. We talk about negotiating your salary, we talk about interviewing, we talk your assignments and writing resumes, we have employers in the classroom, um, career exploration. Um, so a lot of great things happen in that one credit course that you already have to do, but now you've kind of gotten a timeline and requirements to get it done. Um, as well as support along the way. Not that you don't have it outside the class, but it can be helpful. Great questions. Uh, for those of you who may be world campus, our resources are available. So when you schedule in Nittany Lion Careers, um, you can schedule with us to have a virtual appointment. We One of the reasons why we're still doing a lot of virtual events during our career week is so that we can be accessible to those in World Campus. Um, when it comes to the professional development class, though, that is a UP course. So it's on, in person on campus. There may be other alternatives in World Campus curriculum I'm unaware of, but um, there are two career coaches specifically for World Campus, Lynn Atanasoff and Matt Soroka, um, and they may have that answer for you. Any other questions? Great questions. Thank you all for participating.
Okay. Well, thank you all for coming. And first event for Liberal Arts Career Week. We look forward to you joining us for the rest of the week. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out or stop into our office here at 101 Sparks. Um, keep an eye out on those notifications about how the weather turns this week. It's never career week without a snowstorm. So um, take note to Instagram. We would love to have you following us and our LinkedIn account where we post positions. Um, so thanks so much. And we look forward to seeing you soon in the office.